let me start the session. So, uh, in last few years, we are demonstrating something about uh, network collaboration in film post-production, and we found another interesting area which is uh, getting uh, attractive in uh, in the film in the film industry, and it is uh, film restoration, which is. Um, um, doing two main things. And the first one, uh, driven mostly by the culture, community, and the governments, um, and it is something like uh, preserving culture, pres uh, cultural heritage of the society or nation or whatever, whatever you feel. And another one is being driven by business. And frankly speaking, it is about making more money from the assets you have already on your film. So the restoration itself is a collaborative process in between system operator, as he is driving a machine, and uh, original creator. And if the creator is, is uh, not available, just passed away or mm, in, in distant locality, uh, the judge is being done by some kind of panel of experts. And there are some limitations. The first of this is the scanned film is typically not allowed to uh, leave the facility, as this is a typical rule for the, for the studios, just because pirates are everywhere. And uh, in most cases, it is still possible to stream pixels. And not the film itself, but the, the image. So it is possible to work uh, on distant, uh, distant locality. So let me give you some feel about the, uh, about the process or why the scan is, is not. So this was a uh, fir first film restored within the Czech Republic. Uh, this is a part of three, uh, three, uh, three part saga uh, made by famous uh, director Franciszek Vláčil. Uh, but we have more of these uh, pieces um, and uh, we found another example which has been done just this year and we decided to take a look for you how this process could be done uh, in remote collaboration. So the film we are working on is a 
Feynman's, Feynman's Ball uh, in Czech language is Hoří má paningo, which is a comedy uh, originated in uh, 1967 by Miloš Forman. You may know this uh, name because he got uh, Oscars and uh, he lived in uh, States for a while. You can find a profile of the film on I IMDb. Uh, we had a original media uh, in a 16 millimeters negative. Uh, we had some copies, so uh, we used all this material to create the b best what we what we can have. We scanned all this media on in 4K to on not light scanner, and we have been cleaning this uh, in PF clean uh, PF clean software. So I have another another piece of uh, of video. Let me to show you the showreel. Uh, Hector, could you turn the house lights for a while? So this is not the end of the demonstration. <laughs> um, so let me to show me a, a few slides I'm expert in, I hope. Uh, so the boring part will start. So uh, what we have this uh, to make this, I think we are getting some echo from the other side. Uh, so we have a uh, MVTP uh, 4K transmission box. We are using uh, uncompressed uh, 4K transmission just because you may see that the film is full of grain and we really want to remove all the artifacts be based on the compression just because we really, really need, you know, only the artifacts that has been originally in the film. Uh, and we have a, uh, we have a conference uh, using the same same technology. Um, we have a uh, ultra grid, which is doing a screen capture in the Prague, which is the, the where is a PC with a PF PF clean software. Uh, this is the software for cleaning the film, based of uh, developed by, developed by a company called Pix uh, Pixar Farm from the UK. We have a 4K LCD panel, and we have this beautiful uh, environment in Atkinson Hall. So 
why we do need this in, in 4K. As it has been said, everything has been scanned in 4K, so there is no transformation, so you will see you know, everything at is had been uh, is had been scanned. So this is the this is the uh, schematics. I hope this is gonna work somehow. Oh, this way, yeah, this way. So we have a PF clean in in Prague sending a 4K a 4K image to a machine in San Diego and feeding the 4K beamer, which is for now off, and we. This this big part is just the just the video conference, which could be replaced something, which it, which is a bit uh, uh, which is a bit slower and not that complex. But on the other hand, we really do need keep the work since in the in the speech uh, of uh, of all guys, both guys. So for the demonstration, uh, we have a, a operator in Prague, system operator in Prague. Uh, we have a, a local local producer, which is uh, Mirek Sokor, sitting behind that behind the table, um, and I hope uh, there will be another another guy, uh, maybe the original author, who will who will appear at the at the very end of the demonstration. So, Hector, may I ask you put your Christie's down. Uh, Run the SRX. Uh, put my ha house light on on my side down, and could you enlight Mirek, which is sitting behind the table, if it is possible? No. Okay. So this house light down. So uh, Mirek, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to uh, introduce uh, my colleague. Uh, Yerka, which is on the absolutely opposite side uh, of the uh, optic fiber. Hi, Yerka, to Prague. Uh, you probably uh, saw Yerka also on the previous videos on the uh, restoration of Marketa Lazarova movie and also on the uh, Fireman's Ball uh, restoration movie. Uh, Yerka is a great expert in the restoration matters. He is a great experience and uh, he also kind to uh, do the simple operator for us today. So the si situation we are simulating is that uh, I'm the project leader here in the US because the, uh, the author of this great, uh, great movie is also in the US, uh, but the restoration itself uh, couldn't leave Czech Republic because uh, this uh, movie is, uh, uh, is a fantastic, um, fantastic uh, movie and the Czech Republic and the especially the archive wouldn't let it leave uh, the, the Czech uh, Republic. So uh, only UPP as a restoration uh, facility and the post-production house uh, could have the uh, laborals uh, be able to scan it, but the, the films uh, and the uh, DPXs couldn't leave uh, the facility. So uh, Jirka and his team already done the the restoration in, in all the steps uh, and what we are doing now we are reviewing the restoration process and uh, me as a responsible person to, to the client to the author uh, i will be reviewing all the all the restoration parts if uh, we haven't missed anything or if we haven't removed something we don't want to remove and if we are keeping the film as it is in the time of the premiere and we are not making the new movie in any better or uh, worse uh, state. So, Jiri, can you show me what you what you have done, and we can go through the process. process so we plus PF clean and uh, this will help us to clean some gates automatically. Here you can see the results of the automatic clean and uh, 
we must be very careful with that because since it's still a computer and uh, you have the, the machine you need, uh, the computer can't tell sometimes what's work and what's not. So uh, as you can see here, uh, some words were taken out, but some uh, you know some of the picture was taken out also. So for example here you can see the buttons uh, on this uh, this man here uh, that were taken out by the by the PFP. You can you can see that here here. So uh, what I need to do in the process, in the beginning of the process, I will take carefully what's automatic uh, automatic system done, and I have to remove all the mistakes. So I will just put back, uh, you know, the uh, the image that is that is done. Of course, uh, in here uh, we made it a little bit more visible, so we we did it a little bit more drastically to the image, but we can't allow that uh, to do it in the uh, normal process. Okay, so uh, I will play it now. You can see that uh, uh, it's almost very nice. It made it uh, really, really good. Um, yes, with the buttons, it looks definitely better. Yeah, I, I just, uh, I just put back, back, uh, you know, few, few of the, the images, uh, but it would take a lot, a lot of time to put all the buttons in there. But uh, now, when the automatic process is uh, ready. Uh, there's still some uh, of the words left, so I need to do the manual uh, cleaning. So uh, what I do now, and what my team have done for uh, you know many weeks, <laughs> was uh, actually to look of uh, look for the image and looking for the words manually. So uh, this might look uh, you know uh, a little bit simple. But I have to look for the word and just you know, mark it like this. And here you can see, see the result. That uh, one by one I can find I can find uh, the words and remove them like this. And that is the you know uh, that is the part of the particular that, ta that takes uh, you know the most of the time actually. Okay, so uh, Mirek, do, do you have some questions for me? Or? Oh yeah, definitely. I see you did a lot of work, but still I can see there are some, uh, some troubles we should fix. What about the hair? Uh, yes, the hair. Uh, you mean uh, this one here? Yes. Okay, yeah, that's uh, some uh, other uh, problem we need to fix. Uh, there's another effect for that here. Uh, it, uh, one of the methods is uh, simple, as you know from the Photoshop, uh, probably the cloning scan. I can do something similar to that. So because in here the hair is on the simple background, I can just take this part of the background from here and simply <coughs> draw it all over it, and then just apply it for the all the, uh, for the all images of the shot, and then play it. And as you can see, it's really. Uh, well, this was kind of easy, but uh, you know, when you have uh, shots, uh, when there's, for example, a moving background or something, uh, you know, uh, something more difficult in the shot happening, uh, it takes uh, for, it takes a week uh, to you know do the restoration of uh, such a hair. Okay. Okay, I think it looks actually good. Uh, actually, I can see that this is the purely scanned picture. Could you show us how it would look, of course, before the color grading we demonstrated a few years ago, how it would look if we beam it in the cinema? Okay, something like this. Yes, that's much more than I remember it from the, from the TV and from the cinema. I think, uh, okay, thank you very much. I think this is uh, kind of presentable to our client, so let me call the client. So, my dear author, do you think this is, uh, this is possible for you? Do you agree with these changes? Front, front. Yeah, so uh, it looks good, but uh, you know, it's not what I made originally, you know. Uh, I, I, I suppose it's okay, you know, yeah, it's, it's not, it's I suppose, 
you know, but uh, my eyes aren't so good because I made it in 1965, so it's, uh, you know. <laughs> Uh, uh, can you uh, show me again the color? Can, yeah, so I, I, I want to I uh, uh, see what you can do to adjust the color. Uh, it looks a little too, uh, too warm. Right. Uh, you see, uh, with the PFD, uh, we don't have, uh, you know, uh, we couldn't do the color correction, but we have another station for that. So I just, you know, uh, Put on uh, the filter I have here, but uh, it would take uh, more time to color correct the track down. Yes, thank you, Yuji. I yes, I don't think this is necessary. My dear client, you will do it in the next session with the color grading. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and pay for it. <laughs> You made a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Eri. Thank you very much for your cooperation. <laughs> Back to you, Michael. So I hope we are at the end of the, uh, of, the of the demonstration. So could you back with Christy and shut down the Marco? Uh, so this is it. I hope you enjoy this, and um, I'm a bit sorry about the glitches in the in the screen. It was originated by net packet loss in the in the network, which was not scheduled. <laughs> so let's stay here. All right. So so uh, a couple of things I want to add. So first of all, this team that has done this has brought us again and again at Cinegrid the the next great thing. So this year is uh, remote collaboration for film restoration. Two years ago, or no, 2009, it was color correction, right? Um, we did uh, color correction. Uh, uh, last year was stereo, so uh, uh, stereography. And again and again, what they're showing us is this uh, fantastic MVTP uncompressed uh, transmission over 10 gig of 4K, and I think that uh, uh, you know the, uh, uh, the fact that you can see the grain, and that's a very important factor. Uh, <clears throat> when we were preparing for this, uh, uh, what I was told was that this uh, was shot originally 16 millimeter, and then the north light scans at 8K and down samples to 4K. So we're really looking at a, a, an excellent representation here and uh, you know we're getting to the point where it's like oh hum oh yeah it's only 4k uncompressed and we're only doing live interactive and it's only you know uh, uh, you know uh, you know not anywhere else right not yet you know Gary's gonna do it with Bill next but uh, you know this is the sort of stuff that we've been uh, working on now from 2007 when we did the first first one of these 2007 almost killed us, that demo. And this one was uh, very methodical, and, and, and we can't plan for the packet loss. But uh, uh, well done for the whole team. And uh, the team in Prague and the team here, thank you so much. Oh, we're five minutes ahead of schedule. Do we have questions? Yeah. Do you have any questions? I see you, Jeff. <laughs> uh, Mikhail, for, I, I just want to make sure that, that uh, we understand that what we're seeing, hello, that what we're seeing is the ability for someone to sit in one country or one location and direct restoration of something in another location and be able to see it uncompressed in a way that's, that gives them the true picture of what's really happening. So this is the beauty of this demonstration and this use case, is that correct? So that you don't have to 
assemble everybody with the original film or even the scanned original that we can distribute this around the world. Yeah, th yeah. and um, for example, um, you know, if, if the author passed, uh, typically there is no, no one person who can judge what is possible, what is, what is good, or what isn't. So gather panelists together is sometimes a tough, uh, tough job. Uh, not that tough with the, within the Czech Republic just because everything is at least three hours driving. But for example, for states, uh, it makes a real pain for guys who are traveling globally. For example, if you have someone doing his current work in New Zealand, uh, and he really, he really wants to see what's being restored. It is not a, not that practical to move that guy from Christchurch to LA or to New York or to Prague. So and and typically uh, the the processing suite is not uh, that much transportable. And I am not mentioning the 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 problem with the kind of you know awareness of. Uh, the the whole un unprotected copy of the film, so streaming pictures is acceptable in most cases, more likely if it is co uh, encrypted, but uh, they they don't they are really aware to put um, the, the the raw film uh, or digitized stuff you know on on a hard disk and send it somewhere. So Jeff was the last. I actually want to ask Ron Martin, who's sitting in the back, who's done all this mastering of old movies to Blu-ray, whether this process might be helpful. Good morning. Uh, you know, it's, it's funny, uh, as I was watching this, I was remembering uh, a film called, um, oh, uh, a, a film that we worked on years ago uh, with Baz Luhrmann uh, in uh, the, the colorist and the technical team had to chase Baz Luhrmann around the globe uh, <laughs> as we were doing the, the, the promotional tour of, of the film. Uh, we had to literally pick up tape machines, film rolls, monitors, and ship them around the world to keep up with the director so that he could sign off on the color correction and, and, and the work done on the film. And I was sitting here thinking, and I was actually typing an email to a friend that said, you won't <laughs> believe what I just saw. Uh, all the airline miles we could have recovered and all the time that we could have recovered would have just been a thrill. Uh, uh, although the, the, the travel was exciting, but uh, uh, the, the, the workflow expediencies are, are just amazing, uh, what, we're, what you're talking about here, and uh, truly impressive. So m moving bits, it's a bit greener than moving people. <laughs> and and the only disadvantage I really see is the freaking flyer balance. <laughs> <laughs> so Jeff was asking something. Yeah, I, I don't know about anybody else here, but travel is not as much fun as it used to be. <laughs> so it's it's really nice. Um, but the the users and the people that will be um, the the targets of this are um, uh, maybe few and far between. There aren't that many of them around the world that can actually do this work. Have you considered um, enabling um, uh, uh, multiple people to work on a film at once? Uh, you know, maybe somebody you 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 chunk it up so many frames to this guy, so many frames to that guy, and then. Is there a way for you to do sort of on-demand or offline correction? So for me, it seems like uh, this really breaks the barrier to move, remove the film from the facility. So this is not possible. But on the other hand, we demonstrated in 2009 uh, use of this to to be split in multiple locations. So in the same time, someone in LA can sit down and discuss this together with us. Uh, maybe in Toronto, I don't, I don't care. It depends on the capacity of the network and stuff like that. So it is 
you know, possible do this interactively on, on more places, same time, or we can multiple, uh, we can use uh, time shift. So we, we could have more shifts in Prague, like if he is in a, in a cinema, they don't care about the, uh, about the daylight. And uh, having one, uh, one DOP, for example, in uh, New Zealand, another one uh, sitting in uh, LA and the third one in London, uh, you know, we can easily work around the clock with, with, with the material. So this, this is the answer. I don't think that we will ship hard drives. It's, it's not, a, not the case. I would like to say that uh, two things about this. One is uh, film restoration is not work that should be done in proxy, no. right? You actually are digging into the original. And so, you know, looking at something that's heavily compressed or down res or something is exactly what you don't want, you know? And the second thing is that you've made several references to the director in New Zealand. And uh, if we look at the glyph map, it is the worst place to get to by network in the, in the developed world. It is literally at the far side of the world. And uh, Sydney, no problem. Melbourne, no problem. Auckland, Wellington, really hard, you know. Uh, you know uh, and the reason everyone wants to get to New Zealand is because there's a lot of work being done there, you know. And it's, and it's being done there because that's where the guy grew up, and uh, the great mountains, and uh, you know, good labor prices. So sometimes this uh, technique will work, but if the person really is in New Zealand, we don't have a solution yet. You know? We need to start to dig. <laughs> need to start to dig, right. We need a submarine. Any other comments or questions for the, the team? Here you go. Michael, um, we've seen these really terrific demonstrations and so forth, and my question is, are there, can you cite any sort of practical projects that these collaborative workflows have been um, used on, and um, presumably there are not a whole lot of them, and can you speak to the topic of how to sort of bring these technologies, uh, you know, to the user community and roll them out? So, it seems to me like doing this uh, in 4K transcontinental uh, has a a small glitch, which is the business model for telcos, just because of price of 10 gig in between Prague and San Diego is a bit, uh, having this for, for example, three months is a bit impractical, just because they can, you know, provide this for three months, but you need to pay for two years. So this uh, makes this uh, topic a bit uh, harder, but this is just a, uh, question of, uh, uh, of, of business case. So in this case, we have something which is not that, uh, uh, not that fancy, not that long distance, but in Czech Republic, we have a, a, a archive of uh, film faculty and they start to digitize and restore this and uh, we have a post production connected to the academic network which is the net which is the film faculty connected to and they are working together exchanging the material and working with you know it's most of this uh, most of those films are not uh, 4k so they they are using uh, 2k or hd resolution and uh, students are, are learning how to do stuff while you know, doing this uh, this work, so this is one of the practical um, and examples. And I think uh, it 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 was started just a few days ago. So I think we have something, and waiting for your guys from AT and T and others to come, please. Well, when, when, the, when the networks get fully virtualized and software defined, we'll be in better shape. All right, thank you very much to the Cessnet UPP team here and in Prague.